Final Fantasy 16, The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, Armored Core 6, games that are vying and contending for Game of the Year in the year 2023. However, like a thief in the night, like a dagger in the dark, Baldur's Gate 3 comes out of nowhere and says, Don't you forget about me. We have a launch trailer for Baldur's Gate 3, so let's watch it, let's peruse it at our own convenience and see what this game is all about and whether or not it may be an easy contender for Game of the Year. By the way, the link to this video will be in the description down below. I've seen these first few seconds just to test the audio balance. Well, I gotta admit, if there's one thing Baldur's Gate 3 has going for it above pretty much everything, like, it's the visualization, like, not even necessarily the graphical fidelity of things, but, like, the art is just cool, right? Like, it just seems like one of those cool fantasy worlds. Big castles, big mountains, cool monsters and enemies. Had a weird frame rate drop in the trailer there, but okay. Is that Gandalf? Dude was just like a wizard and a long beard had to be Gandalf, easy. It threatens all who live. It threatens the gods. I mean, my we god, that location right there. The very fabric. Like, when you think of dungeons, I mean. Itself. Dude, it's Squidward on his day off. How would you feel about helping me kill some evil bastards? <laughs> Freaking nice kick, just like right off the cliff. Lackett blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. I like the owl bros. Watching try. Oh my god, three dimensional chess. I mean, look at that, right? Dang, okay. Screaming stops and your mind is gone. The rest, perhaps, is. When your mind is gone, I'm pretty sure that's the players who played Redfall. Silence. Dude, look at him. That guy looked sick. Like, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to, like, Baldur's Silence. Gate 3. Just very iconic visuals, just immediately, like, off rip. That just really stand out compared to a lot of the competition. And it just leans into those fantasy elements and just says, you know what, we are a fantasy game. We don't need to really make sense initially. We can provide these high fantasy concepts, throw them in this world, and just say, go with it. It's a game that's predicated and based upon player choice and player agency, allowing the player to make many different choices, possibly for each quest that changes the outcome of the entire game. When you have a story like that, being able to juxtapose that with high concept locations that really resonate with the player, they can act as a backdrop for all those choices and those moments that happen on an individual playthrough to occur and to resonate for. Because your memories of one location may differ, differ from someone else because of all the choice in a game like this. That's one of the charms of it where it can feel familiar by interweaving concepts of traditional high fantasy, but blends it with its own with its own unique aesthetic and its own unique visuals to stand out on its own. Like, when you think of a deep, dark, dank dungeon, like, I show you this, you're like, okay, yeah, I that looks about right, maybe pirate-themed because there's a giant skull up here. Maybe that's Jack Sparrow. Oh yeah, make sure there's like like some puddles, throw some skulls in there, few torches, and have a rat run across the screen. The weave, the very fabric of the but like universe. all these different locations, like that matters in a game the size of Baldur's Gate 3, because if you stare at any one location for too long, at least for me, it grows a little bit thin and a bit tired. Having all of these different locations and aesthetics and seemingly... This looks like the town from early in the trailer. Yeah, from like right around here. At least it looks like it to me. Have these locations changed throughout your game. And the choices that you make in this playthrough. Let those choices alter the actual world. That's the style and the appeal of Dungeons & Dragons. I haven't really ever played the Dungeons & Dragons. I'm not a D&D guy. But from what I hear and from what I've seen of playthroughs, that is the overall vibe. It's throws into this sandbox world that may have a story run by a DM, but it's still highly variable, still highly 
influenced by the decision making of the player. And if you're able to convert that experience to a video game, then that's just a synergy just inherently unique to the video game genre in a lot of ways. It just works. It helps with immersion. And sure, I'm going to hope that the final game is a little bit more... How do you say... Polished, maybe? Because there's a few frame drops throughout this trailer. Now, whether or not that impacts gameplay probably won't all that much because it's a turn-based game, because it's D&D, but still, just to help with the immersion and visuals overall. Some animation that just kind of looked like a little out of place in certain areas, like with the owlbear guys. Where were they? It was like when they spawned in. I think it's back here. Oh, like right here. Just the texture of the spell work here. But it's very short and very quick. Most people probably wouldn't even care. Watching you try. In mere moments. Oh but my god, like the, the enemy design here. Like, yeah, giant bone monsters and skeleton bros aren't necessarily the most unique enemy in all of fantasy. But I mean, it works, and this looks like a unique take on it that looks interesting. That helps add to the sense of danger in this world. You have dreaded. I think if Baldur's Gate 3 is capable of is. carrying out on its promise of scale, while also intermingling Science. quality within that scale, I think I'll have a dang good argument for Game of the Year, because I'm not someone who's going to argue that Game of the Year should just go to whatever game sold the most. I'm not that kind of guy, personally. It's not where I would place my vote for Game of the Year. However... The quality that could be on display with Baldur's Gate 3. If all the marketing is to, be, is to be believed, Larian is a trusted developer. They have shown time and time again that they are willing and capable of putting out a qual high quality product in this style of game and genre. That speaks to something, right? That speaks to an inherent trust that a lot of people are going to place with Baldur's Gate 3 because of the pedigree of the company behind it. I'll enjoy watching you try. Moments, all that you have. And I don't think it's going to appeal to everybody. I think that's going to be one of the main differentiating, as differentiating aspects about what kind of RPG player are you. Do you prefer a more on-rails narrative and experience as a whole? Well, then maybe something like Final Fantasy 16 may appeal to you more just because it's of that style. But if you prefer a more story-based but non-linear with plenty of player agency and choices for your RPG, then a game like Baldur's Gate 3 could potentially be exactly up your alley, because we don't get games like these all the time anymore. Or maybe you just want a massive sandbox that's not necessarily overly story-driven, but still has some. Tears of the Kingdom could appeal to you in many different ways. That's one of the things about Baldur's Gate 3 that I think is really going to stand by itself at, in the massive crowd this year of high quality game releases is that it's a very underappreciated interpretation of the rpg that we don't see in the mainstream of, our, of video games all that much anymore and that is a player driven experience we're getting one more possibly later on this year with starfield but that's sci-fi again sci-fi or high fantasy that's going to appeal to different audiences here but it seems like we're going to have a little bit of something for everyone. I think that's a really good place to be in for this year. And for those of you who are going to play Baldur's Gate 3, it's looking pretty cool as a concept. I hope the story and gameplay and all that is able to hold up. Let me know in the comments down below if you've played it and how you feel about it. I would love to hear your thoughts and hear your opinions. And yeah, it's Baldur's Gate 3. Even if you're not going to play this game. Even if I don't end up playing Baldur's Gate 3, I think it's important to recognize when a great game is coming out, especially in the modern year, that is willing to not follow the trends that a lot of other games, especially AAA games, go with in terms of microtransactions and just the overall business model of the game. Baldur's Gate 3 is basically just saying, here's a game, enjoy it he is a complete experience we're not going to take away parts of the experience to sell back to you piecemeal 
Here's the entire game. Go have fun. By the way, there's still co-op in this game. Here's an RPG that's player agency driven and forward. That's D&D styled. Set in a really cool world and will let you do pretty much whatever. That's going to have a massive audience and a lot of appeal for that audience. So hey, looks like Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be a true force to be reckoned with this year. And I hope it succeeds as much as it possibly can. Because I want good games to succeed. And I hope you do too. So I'm going to call it there for the day. Please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content. And I greatly appreciate it. And leave a comment down below, like I said, with if you're going to play Baldur's Gate 3. Or if you're already playing Baldur's Gate 3. Or if it's still installing for you. Because let's be honest. That install, si that install size goal. So stay safe. Have a great day. Happy gaming. And I hope to see you all again next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.